Hi everybody, I hope you're all doing well. I'm doing a session for a client, 60 minutes of psychic wisdom and energy healing. We're gonna be focusing on supporting this client to overcoming cocaine addiction. I wanna thank you very much for this opportunity. That's a really tough one. And thank you for opening the door to sharing with us here on YouTube. So you say, I'd like to receive healing for cocaine addiction. Let's also go into the inclination to destructive decisions patterns. I want to be more inclined and gravitate to making decisions that bring me more peace and not destruction to my mind, body, and soul. I think that's pretty solid. <laughs> so cocaine addiction and self-destructive patterns and wanting to make choices that bring more peace to mind, body, and soul. I really like where we're going with this. Thank you so very much. I'm curious to see what we find. I know this energy healing is going to help you and it might help others too who find your video. So I'm gonna relax and get in the zone here. <sighs> okay. Hmm, <sighs> okay. Already I'm being shown a space. This is where I'm gravitating towards and I see you and you're bumping into walls in here, but the walls are more like splintered wood and it's like the framing of a house and the frame is full of splintered wood and you're disoriented in your brain and you're not seeing straight and you're more like a drunk person <laughs> and you're just like bump, bump, bump and it's like you're getting all these splinters into you. And you, I feel like saying, hey, wake up, stop it. Stop doing that. And really what it is, is get some conscious clarity here. You're walking into walls and you're creating more harm than good. But you can't get conscious clarity. You can't choose to see straight. It's almost like something is puppeteering you and you're just falling into it whatever's puppeteering you and you're just going along with it and then it's bumping you into these walls and it's filling you with all these painful splinters and these walls aren't going to stop splintering you. You need to find a way to get out of this, okay? So who's puppeteering who? Is the cocaine addiction puppeteering you? So who's in control of who here, okay? So it's time to get the control back. So who's in control of you? It's, it's you in control of you, right? So if cocaine addiction is some part of you, that part of you has a lot of influence and power. So we need to change the direction of that influence. This is still the beginning. <laughs> and so I got to talk like harsh to you. Come on now. <laughs> get you out of here, okay? So we can get you some clarity in your mind. Okay, you just don't want to listen. This part of you just doesn't, okay? I can feel that I'm just like, ah, yeah. that's kind of what you are like, but that's also how it makes me feel. So what if I represent a part of you that is speaking to yourself and you just can't listen to the voice of reason that you are having with yourself, which is an assertive voice. It's speaking the truth, right? And it's just causing more headache or more scramble in your brain. And it's going against the grains of the cocaine addiction version of yourself, okay? So the one that is puppeteering you, you know? So we've got three reflections. The voice of reason, the voice of, I guess the, the puppeteering, the cocaine addiction would be, I guess, your twisted dark side. <laughs> it's like your angelic voice of reason, your twisted dark side, and then the insanity. <laughs> in between the two. Voice of reason, ah, this is hurting my head. <laughs> no, cocaine addiction, bumping into walls, insanity happening here. We gotta bring this into balance. We gotta bring this into harmony. We gotta bring you back to yourself where you can love your dark side can be the love that it needs to be then for your... <laughs> we gotta get this back together, okay? All right. Yeah, so, okay, so when I'm looking around in here, it's like, <sighs> the answer is no, 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 no. You're going to be stuck in a box for the rest of your life. Done. <laughs> Stamped, approved, signed by cocaine addiction. Done. Okay. 
Wait, why, why does the cocaine addiction get to stamp and approve stuff? No, uh-uh. This is important because you're talking about self-destructive behavior. So your self-destructive behavior, um, we could label it cocaine addiction or any other thing that you do, right? That hurts yourself. And so um, you're giving it the power. You're giving it the power to be the leader of the country of yourself, okay? So it's in the leadership role. It's the CEO of the company of yourself. It's the one getting to sign the paperwork. It owns the bank account. <laughs> it gets all that stuff, right? It gets to make all the decisions. The twisted, evil, dark puppeteering side that then is is buddy-buddy with the insanity side and nobody's listening to the assertive and voice of reason of the angelic side, which then is this little man. This is the odd man out, okay? Hmm. So, all the energy is circulating. Okay, it's going around counterclockwise. <sighs> and when it circulates, it's, um, it's almost like the world is revolving around you and it's changing, okay? And it's picking up a lot of dust, a lot of dust. And it's almost like a volcanic eruption. But the volcanic eruption isn't like um, with lava, it's, it's with ash. And the ash is everywhere. I mean, I'm, I'm on a horse and I'm, I'm, I'm just kind of trying. I've got uh, like a bandana <laughs> over my nose and mouth. And I, I've got this, like, I'm trying to shield my eyes. I have a cowboy hat. <laughs> I'm trying to um, maneuver my way through. But it's not like I'm riding the horse like giddy up, go horsey. It's more like I'm on the horse and I'm trying to get a feel for my direction. This is all covered in dust. In every direction it is covered in dust. I can't see. And there's no um, place to go for shelter. It's like I'm exposed to the elements here. This is the next scene. This is, it's, it's, so this is the words. It's like, it's all wrong. It's all wrong. Everything's all wrong. It's all wrong. It's, it's building up. It's a problem. And I can't see which way to go. I'm never going to get out of this. Um, it's taking over the world, which is the world of you, right? So in every direction in the world of you, it's just a, this accumulated volcanic ash. It's just a desolate, hopeless, non-growing region with of decay, basically. And there's no shelter, protection. But if you're doing this to yourself, why are you doing this to yourself? Why do you want to create the gift of the volcanic ash eruption for the part of you then who has to conquer the elements that are in despair? You're giving yourself an impossible scenario. Why do you want to do that to you, though? Why do you want to do that? Maybe you're overcoming this cocaine addiction more than you're, you're giving yourself credit for. So um, let's say that the angel side of you has pull. But now the cocaine addiction side or the self-destructive side and the insanity has to get 10,000 times louder and then prove and smush that angel side into the ground like putting a cigarette butt out um, and prove how weak you are. And then you believe it. And then you go back to, you know, your place. <laughs> it puts you back in line so it can continue to puppeteer you. So you've got to stay 10,000 times stronger even if you just can't do it. You've got to keep doing it. And there's going to be times where it's going to feel like impo you're up against impossible odds. But the only reason you're up against impossible odds is because it is trying to create the impossible gap that you'll never be able to conquer it, okay? Doesn't want you to conquer it because for once the insanity has control. The insanity does. And so when the insanity has control, in a way, there's an odd sense of freedom in that because then you could just give in to it. It's hard to stand up against it and bring insanity back to sanity and now you have to keep it under control. My gosh, what a mess. You might not be able to convince insanity to be sane. And now you've got it inside yourself and you're going to have to keep it under wraps until it finally falls asleep. And that could take years. But you got to get this. You, you're the new sheriff in town, okay? Like you are the new sheriff in the town of yourself. And you're the new leadership. 
You're signing the paperwork. You're the judge and jury of this court. <laughs> You're the leader of this court. You're the ruthless angel of, of assertive and self-worth and self-love and strength, okay? And I wear, I'm the new sheriff in this town, okay? That's you. And you got to get these unlawful, these lawless cocaine addiction selves <laughs> and the insane ones. You got to get them under control. How are you going to do that? You've got to be tough. You got to be tough. So what do you do if um, the scenario is uh, it takes the form of a, um, an event like a volcanic ash eruption and everything dying? Like, how are you going to be bigger than an environmental disaster? in the world of yourself. So again, you're on the right track because it's not just cocaine addiction, it's your attraction to a self-destructive behavior, self-destructive behavior. And I, I, I relate to this because I can be a perfectionist. A perfectionist has a self-destructive behavior. Um, I'll never be good enough, right? So that's like we all have our own things. So I can understand on some level how we separate and then we start to let these parts of ourselves take control and then we have to outgrow them. We literally will have to outgrow that. You're going to have to outgrow it, okay? And you can do it. You can outgrow this. But you might have to face it in a new version of itself, you know, something new along the way. But let's just see. Let's just see what the next thing is here. You're tired of... Because uh, I, uh, I, I keep this positive voice, almost like the positive drill sergeant, and I'm like ramming it into your head, like... Like, hello, you got to do this. Come on. <laughs> Think McFly. You know, <laughs> this is what it's like. Come on, you got to do this. And so I'm, it's like this drill sergeant. That's what you're saying. It's just like, ah, uh, you're like a drill sergeant in my head. And that's the angelic side that is trying to be assertive too, is trying to get control over this. And it's really hard on your head and you're very worn out about it. It's hard. It's hard when you are this worn out. And you ask if there's an end in sight. Like, is there a light at the end of this tunnel? Oh, boy. I don't know the answer to that yet. But when you ask, um, there's weird gremlins that start to come out. I don't, I don't know what, what these are yet, uh, but they're like little gremlins are just sort of running in and out of the scene. And some of them are um, attacking your, your head, like scalping you, like going to take your brains out of your skull. Like they, they're wanting to mess with your head. They're wanting to cut your brains out of your head. They're wanting to um, cut out your sanity. They're wanting to... Uh, I just stopped time here. Ah, oh, boy. It's getting extremely dark. I'm telling you, you want to talk about an ash, um, eruption of ash. It's like it's blotting out the sun and everything is being swallowed up in darkness. And it's quite creepy because the only light that's, that exists here is your light. But what good is your light when it's surrounded by all this darkness? Because even if I was standing an inch away from you, I couldn't see your light because it's completely consumed by this darkness. Just a second here. I'm, I'm really going to have to investigate this. <sighs> Again, we are still exploring the path of why are you doing this to yourself. And I just say bring it. Just bring it. You know, if you want to make this go all the way down... To the worst of all nightmares, let's go there. I'm ready. Let's go there. Let's see how freaking messed up this can get. Let's just go there. You know, scare me. <laughs> Show me how freaking terrible it can be. Let's go there. It's interesting because... Because uh, what it's doing to you, it's, it's not like it's going to, um, it's like a slow suffocation of your sanity. 
that's how it is um, working. It's it's magic on you because it's not like um, it's not so. You know when something happens and you know right from wrong in that situation. But then you ever have like a right and wrong situation that prolongs over decades and you just can't tell where you're at with it anymore. You don't know where you're at with it and why it's still there and you know what it means to you but you can't seem to get out of it and blah blah blah. And it's just like this slow suffocation, okay? And so is it really the shock effect that it's going to take us to the shock effect or is it winning with slow and steady suffocation of yourself a slow and steady like death of your sanity um so that's kind of how it's like this slow creeping um energy who's in control of who i say who is in control of who because you need to say, I am in control, and it needs to be the version of yourself that is this, like, heroic, angelic, assertive, um, I'm the new sheriff in town persona. And you got to get solid with it. You've got to take ownership that that is who you are now. You've been given so much time to decide that that is who you are, and you aren't taking full ownership of it. And you're letting all the bandits run wild. And now that they're running wild, they're duplicating, creating echoes, and going to make it 10,000 times harder. And you're going to have to be 10,000 times, 10,000 and one times stronger. Like, to really get this under control, you got to be one step ahead. And you're just, like, swimming in it. Like, and that's the self-destructive nature. That's the influence of the cocaine addiction. That's the decision to even go there and get swallowed up in it. Um, so you're up against that motivation. And that is in yourself. That has become a part of your identity. Okay? So you're up against yourself. And I'm telling you, yourself is a tough character. Yourself is. How are you going to manhandle this part of you? Like, you're going to have to outsmart it. But you're going to have to do it not by having to outwit it in the mind, but by being bold enough in your total being to just shed that layer completely. Put it completely to rest. We're talking about a mind game here. You understand, right? It's not like... Um, like everything pretty much is a mind game in the human world. But this is something... A behavior, a physical action that is developing a psychological relationship. And this is love or this is self-love. And so if you give into it, you're giving yourself a treat. You're giving yourself a gift. But you know better. Some part of you knows better. And that part of you that knows better is saying, you don't need that. And the other part is saying, um, yeah, I do. And I want that. So I'm going to do that. I'm just going to do that one time. It's not that big of a deal. you know. And then I can start fresh. And it's just like this never ends. you know. This never ends because you give in one time one time it's like you you signed your soul away again you just did it again and that's the slow suffocation here every time you give a little bit of room and a little bit of room it takes that room and then some and it keeps it until you don't have any room left and then you just find yourself stuck okay in the slow suffocation so you're gonna have to rebuild your entire self and Again, we're still trying to find the root of this. Why do you need the self-destructive behavior? Why? <sighs> this is all important conversation. It's not just an important conversation because you can see, your, see the situation, you can see your relationship with it. It's giving conscious awareness, conscious understanding of the situation. But I'm also communicating this inside your like subconscious universe. Like I'm inside of something beneath the surface that is calling the shots and encouraging you to just behave and not be able to stop yourself. Um, so I'm in there too. I'm, ah, it's so, I'm going to have to be quiet for a little bit. Because I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to switch the train tracks, okay? <sighs> I 
what can I do? I'm talking to your higher self, your guides, God, angel, everybody that's on your team of support. Because you're here to be human. You're here to go through these challenges and still love yourself no matter what. You know? Because to be human isn't... We always want to strive to be the hero living the perfect life, but really life is just this like constant um, challenge, you know? And it's always going to have a challenge to it. Always. It's, it's so... If it always has a challenge, then it's always meant to be difficult, you could say. Painful. You're going to have to paint a picture of a brand new you, brand new life. It's hard to get out of the one that you're so familiar with has become an idea of love. Even if it isn't, it's a love-hate relationship. And that is an attractive thing, a love-hate relationship. You can't have that thing that I want. That if I have that thing that I want, then it is going to hurt me. And I want that in my life, but I don't want it to hurt me, but it's going to hurt me, and I have to break up with this. I'm going to have to. You have to get a divorce. Like, I mean, I mean straight up, like, you, this is one of those, um, un has an abusive relationship, you know? You're in an abusive relationship with yourself here, but it's the cocaine addiction. That's the weakness of your marriage with yourself, you know? It's like you got to get this out. Toxic, manipulative nightmare. Not love at all. You got to know better than that. But you have to build, you have to build it into your, yourself, into the mathematics of yourself. You, your math it includes like remainders and variations of this um, in, included in the calculations of every day. Like it's part of you. It's part of your math. But you've got to build new remainders where today is a day where I gave myself and none of that. Might feel like something's missing from your math, you know. Still don't feel like I've hit the root yet. Still working on getting there. It's it's like you don't want me to go there. Because I can stay, I'm going deeper into the situation, but I still feel like it's still superficial. It's like I'm staying above um, the waves. Like I've got my little ducky raft and I'm just hanging out up here and maybe I swim down just to look, but I'm not going to go deep in that. We got to go into the abyss of this. Where is, where is this? Like, where, what is calling this for you? And make it clear, like, no more hiding, you thing. It's some part of you. It's always some part, you know, some subconscious um, relationship. You didn't even know it was there and it was built a long time ago. This, so, this is so common, it's so influential, especially if it doesn't get mended properly. It, it encourages these challenges, which make us stronger people, you know. But for some reason, it says you need the self-destructive nature. You need it because that's what real love is. Real love is painful. Real love is manipulative. Real love is love-hate. That's what real love is. That's why you need the symbolic... Um, behavior it's like symbolic of what love is your mind can know better but this um equation is saying that the program this is saying that by the way i it's almost like um as i'm talking i'm trying to it's like I, i'm in the submarine and i'm just like drop like let's go there like let's go there into the depths the depths the depths the depths the depths and we're traversing time and space okay it, it's like i'm going into a subconscious universe but it it's like um it doesn't want to have a place where it exists it doesn't want to have a, a place i could traverse an identity i could give it because it doesn't there's so much going for it 
and there's so much of you saying, let's keep this in play, like keep myself a slave to this. Um, I like this slave game. I enjoy this. You know, so I, I like it doesn't want to stop. Like it doesn't want to be found. So I've got to find the thread that says, yes, it, it's time now. Is it time? Is it time? All right, I'm just going to park my submarine here. That's what it feels like. There's no real structure. I'm just going down, 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 and it's like a slow descent um, into the depths of somewhere, okay? But I know that this is the right path. This is taking me where I need to go because I believe in myself, and I know what I'm doing, you know? So I'm just going to touch with my fingers. I'm just going to touch this space and explore where I'm at thus far and what this space has to do with this vulnerability of yours. Yes, okay. It just shows me a being with a saw and it just tries to cut my fingers off. It's just like echoes, you know? It's just uh, reactions and it's trying to get me distracted. So I'm just going to feel my way through that. Because that's not what the, the solution is. That's not the answer. It's okay. Something changes and uh, my heart starts to be flooded with a sense of what real love feels like. And it's like when flowers are pollinated by other flowers. It just, there's something so beautiful and enriching about it. There's something so alive and fresh and brand new. There's so much connection and beauty. And um, instead of being in a place where there's all this ash, you know, erupting, it's, it's like pollen in the air. And all these flowers are open to receiving the pollen. And there is love. There's so much love in the air. And the bees can sense it too. The bees are coming to life and the animals are coming to life. And there's a sense of real spring and real um, awakening to the warmth and rejuvenation of our whole planet and that rejuvenates us from the inside out and we're not going through the winter of our life we're going through the spring of our life and we all feel that impacted by that and there's something that you're starving for that you can't really taste it in this world and I see it as the pollen dust in the air and it's an agony that you feel also in your sacral chakra. It's just, it's like um, a prolonged um, sense of emptiness. And your sacral chakra is what is sacred about you. It's pleasures of life. It's intimacy, yes, but it's, it's, it's everything that brings the joy and pleasures of life. And what makes life really about creation and love and self-expression that is... Um, moving and meaningful and joyful and pleasant and this feels like uh, a cupboard that hasn't has seen a grocery um, I don't know in a hundred years or something it's like a long forgotten empty house it's just uh, nobody um, to fill it nobody to enjoy it nobody to love it and it feels purposeless. It's no purpose. Lack of purpose. Lack of feeling valued. Lack of... Lack of a, ability to receive value. It's just... I am standing and I am just that. That's it. That's all that I am. Standing empty and alone. A cupboard that is never full of anything. There's nothing in it. Not even a cobweb, it's just so barren. There is no spring here. There never will be a spring here. Never. And it's like um, destroying me. 
the house that is empty says, just, just end me, just take my life. And I see an odd kind of leprechaun, um, but it's bigger than a leprechaun. It's just like a jolly kind of evil looking like Rumpelstiltskin type. And he's got, he says, oh, you want me to do something destructive to help you? Oh, yes, I can do that for you. <laughs> it's like, yahoo, I'm going to do it. Ha ha ha. I don't know. It's just like kind of cartoony like that. But uh, it's um, lighting a match and it's going to burn the house down and it's going to laugh the entire time while you're screaming. But it's helping you, right? It's helping you, the empty house, and find your, your freedom. Um, but what you're, you remain um, still there. And now you have even less than you had before, which is even funnier to this sort of Rumpelstiltskin to see that you had wanted to be burned or do you wanted to be set free and your freedom ended up leaving you with less than you had before. It's so funny. It's very funny because the truth is you, you can't die. You can't escape. You can only live. But what is living as an empty house or an empty cupboard? What is living? What is living exactly when it feels so empty and barren? Is there a solution to get out of this? No. And the question is then how will you find fulfillment when you cannot be the spring? You can't ever reach it. You're not a spring or a summer or fall or a winter. You're just abandoned. You're just an empty, abandoned, useless house. Not even a spider wants anything to do with you. That's what's in here. That's, that's what I'm coming into in this, this sort of weird abyss place. The subconscious um, reveals this scenery, okay? To try to understand where, where it is the root of this. Maybe the cocaine is going to shorten your lifespan. The self-destructive behavior is to shorten your lifespan because it is unbearable to live. And this isn't necessarily taking your life, but it is chipping away at it, right? But it's not as if you actually want this either because the house wants to have a family. It wants to protect a family. It wants to... Um, wants to be alive with a family in, in the heart of its being. And there's nothing, there's nobody, not even the air is enough. So it found Rumpelstiltskin, the cocaine addiction, like the laughable, lovable chap <laughs> just <laughs> that is going to burn you all the way down to the barren remains, you know? <laughs> and then who will ever want you? You see that this is what I'm coming into here in the depths. It's uh, not love, is it? But sometimes life has these like barren, prolonged um, times where there isn't love to fill it. What do you do with that? Like, what do you literally do with that? It's like the desert of your life, you know? What do you do with it? Can you find fulfillment in these actions of uh, healthy eating and go work out? And it's like... It's almost a barren, superficial, um, but it is something to do, to pass the time. <laughs> Get to know the spirit of who you are. It's far more enriching than this rumpled, skilled skin behavior. I'm going to move on from this scene. I'm going to look for another one, okay? Because I can't merge the spring with the house and with what remains of the house and I can't rebuild the house. So I've got to work with something new, okay? Okay, what is something new? Again, it has to do with sacral chakra, so the sexual body energy and a desecration like a barren emptiness. I see a guitar and there is a musician. When he strums the guitar, it makes no sound. And he cries and he sings many songs, but he has no voice. So 
there's no sound here. But he sings from the depths of his heart, but there's no sound and no one to hear what he has to sing or what he has to say. Nobody to move with his own words and his own passion. Soundless instrument that he is and that this guitar is useless, worthless, soundless. I'm trying to see if I can create sound, but I, I feel like it would scare you. Like, um, I'm gonna just trip, create, really vary the volume down, no matter how, like you strum this guitar, it should be loud, you know, it's just, it's gonna be soft, okay? So I'm just gonna gently bring out, just gently bring out a little bit of the sound. This is going to startle you, I can tell. <sighs> because you turned the sound off yourself. You wanted to make it out like you, you were doing everything right. But you did the one thing that would protect you from what would happen if people really did hear you crying and singing and strumming the guitar. <laughs> which is the one thing you need. Not to be withdrawn, but to be heard, okay? So if I am undoing this, I'm creating, I'm allowing the sound to be heard. This is, this is not what you actually want. You want it to appear as though this is some kind of wrongdoing, like the universe is doing this wrong thing to you, but you, you did this, you made it silent. So, this is very, this is uh, there's a gremlin in your head and it's growling at me about this. <laughs> and I was like, you know what? Let's have some popcorn and let's watch what happens and this is gonna be okay. And we're gonna make it lighthearted and we're gonna make it fun and we're gonna cry together. We'll scream together, whatever we need to do. But we gotta get this out of the system and stop re resisting and avoiding this. You need to be heard, you know? You need to be felt, you need to be received. This girl and hates my guts, so I say, hate me. Go ahead, make a sound. Amplifying sound of guitar. Growl, yes, please. Amplify sound of guitar. And now the gremlin and the singer are starting to become the same form. And it's straight up gremlins. Like, you know, the gremlin with the mohawk, like it's like the most evil of all gremlins. It's like that. And it looks at me and it smiles, always smiling. And it plays the guitar and is like looking at me, challenging me like, yeah, you want to hear the guitar? And it, I just, I just think it's like, it, to me, I find it funny because it, uh, it's our, <laughs> this whole thing is already falling apart and it's obvious. Because there's nothing this gremlin can do anymore but try to, to make me believe that um, I should feel threatened or my efforts are failing or something. I'm not the one worried about that. <laughs> the gremlin is the one worried about that, trying to pull it off like it is not. The gremlin, when I hear the sounds, and the gremlin plays, it, I see through the gremlin, I see another scene and it's pretty horrific, okay? It's behind the mind of the gremlin and there's a woman that's screaming and she's trapped in a bedroom and she's being tortured on a regular basis and the door is always locked. So she's not um, able to get out, she's imprisoned in here and she's forced to behave. And she's forced to do what is told of her. Like she's forced to wear what is asked, to be dressed as, as requested and to look as requested and to act as requested. Like, and if not, then other things are going to happen that she's not going to like, but they're gonna happen anyway. And I see that um, there's always a strange kind of red blindfold put around her. And sometimes she's very bloody and sometimes she's just scabbed and sometimes she's mended, you know, but she's never able to get out. She's being tortured. 
So on the other side of the smiling gremlin who plays the guitar and he in gremlin and says that you're trapped on the inside of the gremlin and What I do is I silence the woman, as in all sound of her suffering is silenced. All sound of you from the inside of the gremlin is silenced. Just a moment here. I take the thread of the woman who represents red and I th take the thread of you. You represent like a really gorgeous blue, like a diamond-esque blue. She's like a red velvet, like fabric. And I take the threads of your light and I place them in my heart. They act like worms, just so you know. They're like worms. But I place them in my heart. And it's weird because I see the gremlin is like made out of slushy and it's starting to like slush. It's like the head is slushing off to the ground and it's starting to just plop, 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 like slushy all over the ground. And I start to see that it's less of a, a physical grip and more of a consciousness now. But the guitar is important here and I'm trying to understand the spirit of the guitar. I take each one of the strings off of the guitar, okay? I don't know how many strings are in a guitar, but I decide that there's five strings, okay? And so there's five threads here. Each thread is a part of your spirit that has been silenced. I'm just going to take each one of these threads, whether it becomes a worm or something else, I just place it in my heart and I don't know what it all means yet. I just feel like I'm going to do it like this, okay? <sighs> the guitar is complete. Because I, I'm removing everything that is a reflection of imprisonment. And I'm clearing the, the concept of the like prison guard or prison keeper. But the space still exists. And the space is like... It's holding on and it's odd. It's like out of dignity. It must hold itself together. And I'm like, dignity? Like, there's some sort of pride in this? <laughs> And maybe it's embarrassment. Maybe you don't want to expose the embarrassment, you know? So it's like holding it together so it doesn't have to be exposed to how embarrassed it feels about itself. And I think that there's dignity in being embarrassed because I don't feel that this is what you would ever want for yourself. This is not the type of action you would ever um, bestow upon yourself. Sometimes we absorb like the insanity of our world and it just it creates odd um, behavioral things that we fall into for whatever reason, for whatever memories or experiences or waves we sponged it in as an unborn child. I don't know what it all is, but it's it's like there it's be embarrassed and let the love help you. Because the love, like anybody who loves you wholeheartedly would rather you kind of expose your fragile underbelly. Like <laughs> you got a guinea pig and they don't want to expose that fragile underbelly. <laughs> it's like, no, underbelly exposed. It's like, I'm not going to hurt your underbelly. <laughs> you're safe as the claws come to get the guinea pig of yourself. No, you're safe. Okay. 
You save to be you and all your imperfections and your self-destructive natures and whatever it all means because of all the right reasons that maybe don't make any sense or whatever. We don't have to understand it all. I think you have more pride and dignity by exposing shame or embarrassment than being um, trying to hide something, you know? I really like people who are vulnerable and people who are perfect. <sighs> so I'm I it's almost like petals of a flower and I'm just taking this wall and this wall and this wall and this wall. I'm just opening up the walls and it just becomes a strange flower. And exposes what remains of that space and all the memories contained in it and all the suffering and the silencing of your own soul and the spirit of who you are and the imprisonment of the male and female sides of you and etc. Okay? Gremlin is still here in spirit. I can feel that. It's like moldy food that you can't throw away for some reason. <laughs> Why do we need the gremlin? I, I would really... Let, let me just... Let me just feel out the answer, okay? I'm like, literally, I'm just sort of touching the space for the answer as to why you need the gremlin. Pain that you can't live without. And, I mean, I see you and suddenly there's this terrible ache in the side and you grab it and you're like holding it with all your might as though holding it is going to help you cope with the pain. And it just laughs and says, you'd never get rid of me, never. Like you can't, you've got to let it go. you got to let it be alone. I'm going to continue to listen for more understanding, okay? I have these sounds and worms in my heart, so it is what it is. <sighs> Continuing to listen. Comes back to the sacral chakra, but I want to go further than that. Because the gremlin was wasn't always a gremlin basically it's like um the most beautiful thing you'd ever seen the most beautiful thing you'd ever seen was a rotten apple it was being eaten by maggots but you thought it was a healthy apple you thought it was clean and healthy and you took a bite and it was wonderful but it was you were eating a freaking rotten maggot filthy, nasty apple. This like Snow White trick by her own stepmother. You're like, wow. They just, it's like these rotten apples that really show you what their heart is all about, you know? So while it, I keep seeing this, um, it's almost like a picture perfect. And she has phenomenal hair and it's like a painting of like the first woman God ever created. And it's not Eve for some reason in my mind. I, I see this like phenomenal, like she's on a seashell and she's like the long hair and there's something like the breathtaking birth of the divine feminine. And um, she's like represents everything that is the freshest and the ripest and the most delicious and the most... Um, um, beautiful rosy cheeks and like golden locks like flowing hair and um, it's just you, you mesmerizingly so she's like the pearl that you find in this oyster like she is the the miracle okay like the the pearl the one and she's just a freaking maggot filled disaster Ugh. she's just a gross gremlin that's hard to see her for that. She's just a gremlin in another person's body. Like, hmm, I'm, what am I supposed to do about that? 
and she's imprisoning you like and you're letting her and you're just singing songs of sorrow like ugh. still working on this still figuring this one out because we've got to we've got to come full circle on this on the depths of your mind your subconscious your programming all of this comes back to this cocaine addiction and self-destructive patterns and all of that okay it all comes back to it's about love and co conflict with love love in disguise Love that is not as rich and ripe as we thought. It's just a maggot-filled apple. It's just being, it's gross. And it is eating you alive, too. But you can't let it go because it's, like, so close to being what it can be, but it isn't close. It's, like, far from it. It's only close because it looks good, but it isn't good. How do I help you with this? It's a tricky one. That's it. Because this, all, all that has to be done is, is she's a stinky cheese. I actually like cheese, you know, and I like blue cheese. So stinky cheese isn't like that big of a deal. But I see, I experienced a cheese that is so disgusting in smell. It's like worse than stinky rotten feet that have, haven't had a clean sock in like five months. She is the most stinkiest, nastiest smelling thing. And I need you to really be able to smell her. <laughs> Because it's repulsive. And you need to know that she is repulsive. And you need to know that repulsive is not you. You are not repulsive. So there's no mirror, like, maybe you want to help her, or maybe she's a perfect, like, molding of the perfect, I don't know, woman or something. You're not going to be able to help the stinky sock, like... Nothing is going to help that. <laughs> Time, perhaps. And many lifetimes. Why do you hold on to it? It's like a weird song that you'll never stop playing. And you're living in a delusion. By choice. Because something of the beauty of what it could have been. And it's just... It's a... It's a hypnosis. You're hypnotizing yourself for no reason. Just to have a good reason to be lost in some kind of, like, 80s soft rock. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Crying <laughs> about the love of my life. It's probably a really good song, but it's like, the, the, my heart is, like, in pain, and I'm walking through the rain of a desolate city with nobody. <laughs> it's just like, no, you don't need it. <laughs> We're getting up to the times now. <laughs> We need today, not yesterday. Yesterday is not, it doesn't even exist. You know that, right? It's kind of a weird reality check when, when you realize that yesterday doesn't exist. It doesn't. Tomorrow doesn't exist. Only today exists. Today's the only day, this right this second exists. That's all we've got. <laughs> so what, what else do we think that we have? <laughs> Memory <laughs> only is the only thing that creates the idea of the past. <laughs> and what is the fantasy of the future? Our fears of the future is the only thing that creates the idea of what will happen tomorrow, right? All we have is right now. That's it. And she is not right now. She is not, she does not exist. We're getting up to the present. She does not exist. That's the truth. And there's no hypnosis. There's no lying to yourself. Zero of that. Something weird is happening because you're like a party popper. But it's uncomfortable and it happens from the inside out and something bursts and then rips out of you and it goes up and down out of you. And you're left like a bomb blew up on your insides. But oddly enough, you're kind of um, the aftermath of something weird that you've been going through. 
and it's like you're waking up to today and today is a practical new day it's not about a song or whatever these threads were because the threads i'm just handing to god and then it doesn't matter if they're worms or threads or whatever it doesn't matter because they need a home of love and support and guidance so that way they can mend and heal and be whoever they're meant to be in the next round. And that might mean they'll reconnect with you again, parts of yourself. But right now you're the strongest you you've ever been. And that you is the new sheriff in town, right? And it's not because you live in a lawless um, environment inside yourself, but um, because you're, you're rebuilding and you're starting with some fresh new um, rules and... Um, ways of living that create actual harmony for yourself and it's a beautiful thing it's a, a life force thing it's you getting to know you and it's the assertive angel that you are you're not a mess you're not the old dirty laundry you're not um the the less than okay the scum that builds up in the tub or something no you're none of that stuff and that's that doesn't that's none of that stuff okay because that's the disoriented self, self-loathing or self-disgust, uh, and um, it's not what you are. You are the sparkle of a brand new house. You are the smell of a freshly bought in car. Like you are the excitement of a brand new vacation. Like that's what you are, and you represent the pearl and the oyster that is longing to be found, like um, embraced and loved, like to be seen and valued for your true worth. And you're spectacular. You're one of a kind, you know? You're a miracle. That is right. That is right about you. And there's a breath in this, and there is mental clarity, and there is self-love, and there is circulation, and there is freedom, and there is flying, and growth, and laughter, and joy. There is nothing of, of the discarded um, barren house. That's what, that, 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 we don't know what that is. Because that's not part of your path at this time. Because we're living today. Today is. Doesn't feel superficial to do things that we love, like um, eat right and work out and have pride in ourselves for all of our hard work and our self-love. It feels normal. It feels like life force energy. It feels like um, enrichment. And doing the laundry and cleaning the house, it's enrichment. Light some candles and make it smell good. It's enrichment. Put your mind to work. Um, come up with uh, some new hobby. Um, test yourself. I don't know. Try something new. Take up a cooking class or a painting class. Like go outside the box of yourself. Challenge yourself to do new things. Because um, if you get stuck in the same rhythm and the routine, they get, it's, it's oddly, um, it's like a safe zone. But we get molded and shaped into the safe zone of inactivity and it becomes kind of a drab and uneventful life. It, it feels that way or it feels safe. But um, wow, we really grow when we are building upon what makes us truly shine, you know? So I'm just amplifying... It doesn't feel like the drill sergeant. I, it's just someone just talking and you're able to hear it and think about it. And it's not like I'm drilling you into your brain this stuff. Because that's how it felt before. It doesn't feel that way, which shows me that we've really made some improvements here. It's not conflicting. You're starting to feel whole with yourself. There isn't an insanity here or a twistedness. It's just the love that you are. The love that you are and proud of yourself, right? All that stuff. Okay, so what else can I share with you? Is there anything your higher self would like to tell you? Okay, well, your higher self has a type of, it looks like a diamond, but it also looks like a top, like you could spin it. 
and it goes around and around and around and it levitates and you're watching it and it's like an aqua blue um, color and you reach your hand out but it's almost like your higher self in this disappear it's like there's something that you seem to or be reaching out for but you can't seem to grasp it and it just it's like out of your grasp And so I, I alter the I alter the density, okay? And I'm just altering the density and I'm I'm asking you to try this again and please don't give up. You are creating the mirror. You're doing it to yourself again. Your higher self in this isn't disappearing. You want it to be out of your grasp. You're manipulating yourself again. Now be careful of that, okay? So I'm going to show you that you've grasp, gra, grasped it, <laughs> grasped it, <laughs> grasped it. <laughs> All right, you did it. You got it. <laughs> okay, you did it. Grasped it. <laughs> yeah, I look at it. I know why you're telling yourself you're not allowing yourself to have grasped it because... Um, it's going to take time to figure out what it is that you grasped. <laughs> it just looks like um, it doesn't make a lot of sense. It's just like a pretty, um, I don't know, like maybe it's made out of glass, but it looks kind of like diamond dust and it's a long, it's like um, long, it's tall <laughs> and it's diamond dust, it's dimensionally diamond dust. Okay. It's not like a flat shape. It's pretty. You said, I, you just say, I don't know what this is. And I see your higher self smiles. Your higher self is the woman with the red velvet. But she also has a fox. And the fox is the man. And she wears the fox around her neck like a very warm, um, like fancy, like old school fancy um, e e scarf. And she's very fancy. I mean, she's got her hair is very fancily done. She reminds me of someone from the 1920s. And she's absolutely intriguing to look at. But the fox is very clever and she keeps the fox with her. Something inside you says, this is my heart. And she raises her eyebrows and she says, how do you know that? He said, I don't know, but I, I just feel like it's true that this is my heart that I've grasped. She says, then you hold your heart in the palm of your hand. And then she looks at me and then she looks at you like she wants me to emphasize that there's, I was telling you that you're some, trying to grasp something that is out of reach and you're not allowing yourself to be able to access it on purpose. So why wouldn't you be allowing yourself to access your own heart? What is it about you having access to your own heart that makes something else vulnerable? Because your heart is your strength and it's your truth. It's your voice. It's your nature. It's your balance. It's your soul. It's your light. It's everything. You feel strange. You feel weak in your legs and... Because you have your heart and your chest and it gives you breath. Your heart loves you. And maybe that's what you're weak to, you're vulnerable to, is love. And your heart loves you. Which means that you genuinely so love yourself. And whatever doesn't want you to love you is vulnerable when you choose to love yourself. And then it becomes silent because it doesn't have any room when you choose to love yourself. <sighs> That's all. That's literally all I meant to share. That was pretty cool. Thank you very much for that experience. Uh, what a journey, huh?
I mean, we went through a lot of pathways here to undermine this situation. I'm so glad you booked a 60-minute session. It's good to have that extra time because you can really see into and conquer a lot. And then really change up the vibes. Hmm. All right. Well, thank you very much for this. Thank you very much for sharing. And for those watching, if you're interested in exploring a session with me, you can do so by visiting my website at abbynormalswisdomquest.com. All right. Have a great day, everybody.